So at the NHMRC, we've been concerned for some time that uh, uh, excellent medical researchers who are women have been dropping out of medical research. If we look at the proportion of women who apply for our most senior fellowships, um, it's uh, less than 10% of applicants are women, whereas it's about 50% or even more for our early career fellowships. So women are dropping out. So Sarayd, uh, perhaps you could just outline what you've done to see what the situation is uh, out there in our administering institutions. So what we did is we asked all of our administering institutions, of which there's 82 at the time, to provide us with information on their gender equity policies, any strategies or approaches that they had in place to ensure gender equity, because as you've said, the issue isn't with getting women into research, it's maintaining them. So it's providing them with the opportunity um, or the environment so that they can strive to achieve, to lead in their fields of research. Of the 82 that we asked for this information, only 46 responded, so the response rate was pretty low. But what we did find, which was even more surprising, was the variability between the information that was provided from the institutions, from almost nothing to outstanding. Um, to get a better sense of that, we undertook a bit more of a formal assessment against 10 key areas. And what we found is that there was this wide varied distribution between the institutions and almost 70% of the institutions we considered to be less than satisfactory or poor. Only two received an outstanding rating, which was quite surprising. And, um, and some of these key areas are not um, expensive areas to implement. They're just standard common sense areas, which um, I think was even more surprising. So it's really uh, very disappointing that about 50% uh, of people uh, of institutions didn't bother to respond to our request for information and then about half of those had really uh, less than satisfactory policies in place. Of course having a policy in place doesn't mean that things on the ground work but at least it's a, it's a very important uh, start. So um, I think we found this pretty eye-opening didn't we and uh, we think we can't leave it at this. Uh, we will update our administering institution uh, policies so that uh, we uh, have good policies in place to support uh, women to uh, be able to um, have a career that gives them leadership uh, in health and medical research. We'll work with the sector, we'll work with those who employ uh, medical researchers, the universities, hospitals, institutes around the country, but we will need to update our administering institution uh, policy so that uh, the country's investment through the taxpayer in health and medical research uh, is maximised and we don't lose all those great uh, researchers who are women who leave, uh, who leave research uh, for uh, uh, for reasons which uh, um, we, we, uh, we can avoid. Um, what's next for um, the NHMRC itself in this area, um, Sarayd? Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about the committee that we have? So we have a Women in Health Science Committee and um, they're very passionate um, about providing opportunities for women to maintain their research careers. So I think this is the first step in um, encouraging dialogue um, between institutions and researchers and I think just awareness raising is really critical. Um, other things that we're looking at is, is trying to engage across the sector to try to have similar policies in place um, to encourage the women to remain in the workforce. Um, and there are all, all sorts of different opportunities but this is not unique to um, Australia unfortunately. This is a worldwide issue and um, if there was a simple answer we would have all solved this issue a long time ago but it's it's an ongoing process but one I think that we need to work together with the sector not one that we can do on our own. Correct but we will do what we need to do uh, which is include looks at our looking at our success rates and all our schemes each year and seeing whether there are um, uh, discriminators in there uh, but at the end of the day uh, it's the employing organisation that uh, will be the crucial part of um, remedying this situation. Thank you.